Good morning, my friends. Welcome to Heal Your Codependency. I'm Marshall Bertrand. I'm your guide into healing your codependency so you can create relationships that you love, a life that's fulfilling for you, and ultimately experience joy and peace in your life post-codependency. Today, in our episode today, we're jumping into the relationship that exists between how our pain is treated and the sense of worth that we carry and how we can use pain to get in contact with our indomitable worth. So as a reminder, the indomitable worth topics are an advanced topic here in healing your codependency. So go gently with yourself because sometimes this stuff is a little like, wow, is that really possible, Marshall? I'm not sure I'm ready for that. Take in what lands for you and let's see what you discover with this process. All right. So before we get to it, I'm going to share this out real quick with the community. Communities, there's two communities I offer. One is called the Heal Your Codependency Community. That is where you can find additional tools, guidance, support in healing your codependency. And then we have the Indomitable Worth Community, where we just focus on understanding indomitable worth, digging into it, and experiencing it for ourselves. Links above on Facebook, below on YouTube. And if you're listening on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. All right. So let's get this shared out here real quick to the groups. Boom, got that one there. Let me know how you're doing in the comments below. And let me know your thoughts on today's video as well. And okay, let's get started. So in my my own personal journey with codependency, with trauma, and with healing, it all started off with trying to fix myself. I thought that if I could eliminate my pain, I would finally be worthy of love. I'd be finally safe enough to be seen by others. I would be able to connect and have the kind of friendships and relationships I wanted. But in this idea was the fact that I thought that my pain was the problem, that my pain drove people away or my pain burdened them or upset them or in some way caused me to be unworthy. It's a lot. That was my normal. That was my life for 20, 30, 32 years. Because of the culture and the family system I grew up in, pain was seen as a signal of sin. It was, a, it was seen as a signal of flaw. It was a signal that you were doing something wrong because the the fantasy that they were selling was that we only have pain because we're doing something bad or we aren't um, pleasing other authorities but if we were obedient if we were showing up in compliance to the rules if we were pleasing the authorities then we wouldn't have any pain this Led me, and th this taught my parents and the culture to treat pain as a problem, to treat pain as something that needs to be fixed, as something that needs to be um, analyzed and then uh, removed, rather than understanding what pain actually is. Well, and I, I mean, you grew up in a culture that teaches you pain is bad, pain is wrong, pain is sinful, you're gonna. <laughs> You're not going to really understand the purpose of pain. What this led to was a cycle of either being criticized, shamed, or rejected because I had pain, or total indifference to that pain. Like, it was dismissive, like, oh, I have pain, well, go, go to your room and work it out. Go figure it out on your own. There, there wasn't a lot of warmth, a lot of understanding, or a lot of care in response to my pain. And what this did is it encoded a relationship with myself that I didn't understand what's going on at the time. I, I mean, I'm, this came out like eight years ago for me in therapy. I'm like, oh, that's why. See, what happens is one of the, the first places of contact we have with being valued by another human being is in our pain. How a person consistently responds to our pain becomes our internal relationship to ourself especially around pain. So if we grow up in environments where we are shamed, criticized, there's dismissiveness, indifference, or neglect of our pain, we internalize that as my pain is wrong, thus I am wrong. There is something wrong with me. 
I shouldn't have this pain. This pain shouldn't be here. It's there because I did something wrong or I am wrong. And that's where we start to identify our sense of worth with shame, with guilt, with worthlessness or unworthiness because of how our pain is being responded to. Now, this if this is like, ooh, yeah, Marshall, this is what's going on for me, take a moment and give yourself a chance. Consider giving yourself an opportunity to just acknowledge that. Like, yeah, my pain was rejected. My pain was dismissed. I wasn't, I wasn't really cared about. And this gives us an ap- opportunity to, to start an important step in the indomitable worth method and in healing codependency is to start disidentifying with what we went through as our worth. In other words, what we've done here, what's happened here, and this is not something that is a mistake on our part, it's something that a, a child would naturally do because of where their brain development is and that they haven't individuated themselves. They, they can't. They haven't developed that yet. <clears throat> what happens is we tend to fuse our sense of worth, our sense of identity with our circumstances, our experiences, and the dominant emotions those bring up. This is why um, triggers can be so impactful. Why we feel like something real is going on is because the body is experiencing what it had in the past and the present again because it's very identified with it. It's like, ooh, this is a danger. We've got to work on this. And if that's real or not in your present reality, it was in some time in the past. So when we acknowledge and we go, yeah, this is something I lived through. This is something I have, I've experienced. It starts helping us understand ourselves. Like, wow, I acknowledge what I've gone through, and then I legitimize it. Of course I'm feeling this way. This is what I went through. This is what my experience is. And notice my language. I went through this. I experienced this. Very different than I am this. Because a lot of times when we are when we've been traumatized and we've been neglected and our child self has blended its sense of worth and identity with the emotions we felt through that neglect and abuse, we, we cre- create I am statements. I am shameful. I am unworthy. I am this. I'm not this. That kind of language. And that is an expression of how we, are, our sense of worth and identity have been entangled with our experience and our emotions. So in the legitimization practice, what we do is we we begin to separate that by going, I went through this. I feel what I do. The pain I feel is a result of what I went through, not who I am. See, the sense of I caused this, I created this, it's my fault, comes from the idea that our emotions say, or from the idea that we think our emotions mean we deserved it. The way I feel, I, I created this. This is my problem. It's not. How we got treated is what created the emotions. We went through something very painful, so of course we're going to have pain in response to it. So it's an important concept here um, in helping us start to individuate our identity and our sense of worth from our pain. This also opens up the next step for us. If pain is the place, the first place of contact where we have experienced a rejection of our value, of who we are, of our own needs and our own um, vulnerability, then it can become the first place of contact where we can legitimize our pain. When we legitimize and value our pain, we start to ignite connection with our indomitable worth. So indomitable worth isn't something we create. It's not something we have to go out and forge. It's not self-esteem. It's not something we have to pump up. It's not something that we have to measure or anything like that. It's something we are made of, but our work is to connect with it. And we do that through through building our awareness of it and our trust in it and then learning how to embody and express it the first place of contact with that is with our pain oftentimes it's like 
when we start to feel that our pain matters, matters to ourselves, it matters to someone else, it starts opening the gate to, to accessing that sense of value, that sense of worth, and then ultimately discovering that indomitable worth we truly be. So this is a powerful place for us to explore. It's like, who would I be if I didn't identify as my pain? But what would change, and also what would change if I saw my pain as a result of the experiences I've been through? not as a product of who I am. This opens the door to accessing our value despite the pain we've been through. It opens the door to caring for the pain in the way that it needs to be cared for. I see you. You matter to me. I'm here with you. And this is where we start to experience a sense of mattering, a sense of being valued by another person, whether that person might be ourself to ourself or another person to us. That allows us to get connected to our worth as well as like, oh, I am valuable. Now I need to start learning what that is, learning uh, how to access it, how to follow it. But it all starts with acknowledging the legitimacy of your pain and allowing it to be seen as a valid result and a real result of what you've been through. So I'm going to check the comments here. Let me know, guys, if this is making sense because just to FYI, this is the first time we're really going into these concepts with indomitable worth. It's the first time I'm teaching them. So we're going to be going through this a few times until we get I get the language down because I'm a person that learns by doing it. So here we go. We're at adventure today. So Deborah said, hi, Deborah. Um, Deborah says, my mother always ignored my pain and I learned my pain doesn't matter. Then I don't matter. That's that exact equation. If my pain doesn't matter, then do I matter? And this is a rational equation because that's what we're, we're seeking love. We're seeking shelter. We're seeking care. We're seeking comfort. And we we rationally go, you know, if I'm valuable to a person, they would do these things. And when they don't, then we're like, do I matter? And then what happens, especially when it's chronic, we internalize that as a state of value. Like, oh, I, as a human being, don't matter because of this chronic cycle of neglect or abuse around my pain. And then... Dan says, I find if I cry with others present, I find myself worried about making others uncomfortable or annoyed, even if it's someone who cares. Yeah, that's an internalized fear, an internalized sense of like, am I causing other people discomfort or pain with my pain? And there's, there is a place where your younger self made that conclusion based on someone else's reactions. This is also a great place to to explore emotional boundaries. It's like if someone else is com discomf um, uncomfortable with the expression of your pain or sharing of your pain, is it possible that that discomfort's about them and not about you, not about your pain, not about your value? That gives us a chance to really separate those two things, differentiate them from themselves and have a boundary there going, it's okay for someone else to have discomfort about my pain and my pain is still valid, legitimate, and real. And I am not causing a problem here because they have discomfort. That's an important place of growth there. It's, it's uh, the autonomization of your value. It's the autonomization of your needs from other people's reactions. We'll be doing some videos on that next week. So my friends, one of our first points of contact in restoring our connection to our real, innate, indomitable worth is the legitimization and caring for our pain. So we connect with that. We can do that using a little practice I call ALI, acknowledge the pain, legitimize it. Legitimization means to make it real and valid to you. It doesn't matter if it's real and valid or not to someone else. If it's real and valid to you, that's what's critical because then you're connected to your lived experience, you're connected to your own sanity, and you're able to care for yourself. The way we legitimize is like, yep, this pain is here because of what I've gone through. 
and it matters to me. This pain matters to me. The experience I went through matters to me because it's affected me. I care about that. That kind of language towards ourselves and then being a, a little open, just open just a little bit to connect with what that feels like for us allows us to move a little deeper into connection with ourselves, into a loving warmth towards ourselves, which begins to open us up to experiencing our indomitable worth for ourselves. Because that's what we're doing here is we are nurturing the connection to indomitable worth by first caring for our pain. That's what we're doing. So if you want to go deeper on this, you want to be guided into experiencing your indomitable worth, come join me for the Indomitable Worth Experience training. It's it's now a two-day training. It used to be a one-day training. It's a two-day training now. We're doing on November 14th is day one where we're going to, I'm going to teach you why your self-esteem failed and it's not your fault, what real indomitable worth is and how we cultivate it. And I'm going to give you your first step, your first practice in connecting with indomitable worth called the possibility practice. And then on day two, which is November 16th, so we're doing on Monday is day one. So November 14th is a Monday, day one. Day two is November 16th, which is a Wednesday. That one, we're going to go deeper on identifying indomitable worth signals, how to navigate pain in that space, and then your pos then your discovery practice. So you can begin to feel it even just for a second, because once it starts to pop up in your awareness, you get an orientation to it, and then you can build on it. And we can build on it through the liberation practices, a uh, liberation course that will be coming out here in January of next year, and then the Indomitable Worth Society, where we go deeper on embodying it and expressing it, which will become available in March of next year. So... Come join us. The link is above on Facebook, below on YouTube. It's 25 bucks. Let's have some fun in helping you experience, discover and experience your indomitable worth so that you can start transforming your life in a way that's permanent. So you can get more loving relationships, the success you want, the clarity you want, your own purpose. How about just that peace of mind where you're no longer wasting a lot of time and energy chasing your value in other people instead it's here and cultivated in you and now you get to go and create connections with others so there we go yes deborah i matter to me that's the first place to contact with ourselves i matter to me my pain matters to me my needs my wants who i am matters to me you're welcome melanie lots of this resonates looking forward to the workshop thank you i'm excited to see you there got some adventure here guys so Gently with our pain. Our pain matters. It's our gateway to getting deeper connection with who we are and with our indomitable worth. And it's essential to our healing. Your pain is a result of what you've been through. So go gently with yourselves. I will see you guys next week in our next training. Have a great day.